Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne and rosacea expert. In this video, I want to break down rosacea. What causes it? Who gets it? And how can we treat it? Well, let's start by thinking about what causes rosacea and who gets it. So rosacea is most common in those over 30, people in their 40s and 50s are often where rosacea starts, and it's more common in women than men. In rosacea, we think there are a few different factors that can lead to it. The microbiome likely plays a big role. We know that people with certain kinds of mites on their skin, especially demonex mites, can be predisposed to rosacea, and treatments that focus on that can be effective. In addition, the sun and UV radiation play a big role in the development of, of rosacea, and this is why sun protection is so critical. And then genetics have an important role to play here as well. We know that rosacea is associated with inflammation and vascular sensitivity, the blood vessels being overreactive in the skin. Things like cathelicidins, LL37, toll-like receptor 2, and mast cells, these inflammatory pathways, play an important role in rosacea. And people who have a tendency to overactivation of these pathways may be predisposed to getting rosacea. People who have vascular reactivity, whose blood vessels are sensitive to different kinds of triggers and inflammation are also potentially more likely to get rosacea. And that may be why we see rosacea as associated with other conditions that are thought to have a vascular reactivity component like migraine headaches. So we've touched on what causes rosacea, but what about triggers for rosacea? Well, if we think back to that underlying pathogenesis of why rosacea happens in the first place, we can really think about what a lot of the key triggers of rosacea are gonna be. Sun is a classic trigger of rosacea. So we know that UV radiation is a big player in the development of rosacea. So of course, exposure to the sun could be a factor that could exacerbate, that could make rosacea flare. In addition, things like alcohol, spicy foods, heat, things that kind of open up the blood vessels can all lead to more flushing and symptoms of rosacea as well. And I think that makes sense when we think back to that issue of vascular hyperreactivity that we see in rosacea. And then exercise kind of along the same pathways is another classic trigger of rosacea. And finally, people with rosacea skin tend to have a lot of sensitivity, skin barrier dysfunction, and many cosmeceutical products or other skincare products can be irritating. So we have to be very careful in trying to pick products that are gentle and are not irritating to the skin. Before we get into specific treatments for the different types of rosacea, let's talk about just general rosacea skin care that's gonna to apply to any kind of rosacea. So we talked about how important UV radiation is into causing rosacea. So everybody with rosacea really should be using a good sunscreen daily, at least SPF 30 to 50. Sometimes if that sunscreen has other ingredients in it like niacinamide that can help calm the skin, that can be helpful as well. Beyond sunscreen, we also want to make sure we're helping the skin barrier. So using a good moisturizer daily, often things that have hyaluronic acid can feel really nice on the skin, or things with some niacinamide can help in rosacea-prone skin as well. So that's another critical part of general rosacea skin care. And then finally, being thoughtful about your own personal triggers. We talked about some of the triggers for rosacea. If you notice that certain things flare your rosacea, being thoughtful about how can I avoid those triggers or reduce them, especially when I don't want to be experiencing the symptoms of rosacea, can be helpful as well. When we think about classifying rosacea, it really falls into three main types. There's redness and flushing. There's bumps, papules, and pustules. And then there's a growth on the nose called phimidus changes. And you can have any mixture of these three types. Some people have just one, some people have all three together. And this is really important to understand your rosacea type because certain treatments work well for one thing but not well for the other. Let's start with redness and flushing. So what's going on here is we have that vascular hyperreactivity, those blood vessels are dilated, they're too open, there's too much blood flow to the skin, and so the skin starts to get a red appearance, and sometimes with burning and stinging. So if we want to treat this, we need to either get rid of those blood vessels or we need to help them calm down. In terms of getting rid of them, that's where our vascular lasers can be helpful. So pulse dye laser, KTP laser, or other energy-based devices like intense pulse light can be helpful to selectively target those overreactive blood vessels in the skin, those fixed telangiectasias, those broken blood vessels on the skin to get rid of them. So that's one of our effective treatments. These can often give a durable improvement where you do several sessions of treatment and that redness and those telangiectasias are 
durably last for a period of time, often many years. We also can try to physically destroy some of those telangiectasias, tasers, those broken blood vessels on the skin, using a technique called electrodesiccation or sclerotherapy, where we physically destroy them. On the medication side of things, there are two creams, one's called oxymetazoline and one's called bromonidine. They both work the same way. The general idea here is if we can tell those overreactive blood vessels to squeeze down, to clamp down, we'll reduce blood flow to the skin and we can reduce that flushing and vascular hyperreactivity. Both of these can give a temporary improvement in redness. In general, oxymetazoline I would say is preferable because it doesn't seem to cause rebound. So with bromonidine, sometimes as that eight to 10 hours of redness reduction wears off, there can be a brief period where the redness is actually worse than where it started. And fortunately, we don't see this with oxymetazoline. The other thing we've noticed in the clinical trials of these treatments is that if you do them consistently, it seems like it may teach the blood vessels to be less reactive and cause actually a permanent or a durable decrease in redness in addition to that transient temporary effect. For more severe redness or flushing, we can use beta blockers, so pills by mouth, that again, try to help tell those blood vessels to calm down, to be less overreactive. And for patients with really severe flushing or burning or stinging, they can be very valuable treatments. Moving on to the bumps, those papules and pustules of rosacea, this is where often our treatments are directed at the microbiome, at the skin microorganisms that we know can contribute to rosacea. Metronidazole is our classic topical treatment for rosacea, papules and pustules, and it works very well. However, there are some newer treatments like ivermectin that have been shown in head-to-head -head trials work better than metronidazole for treating the bumps of rosacea. There's also now a benzoyl peroxide that we can use to treat rosacea. Classically, we've tried to avoid benzoyl peroxide in rosacea because it can be irritating, and people with rosacea-prone skin tend to have very sensitive skin and have trouble with benzoyl peroxide. But if we encapsulate that benzoyl peroxide, if we microencapsulate it, that causes it to be released more slowly onto the skin, and these microencapsulated benzoyl peroxides in clinical trials seem not to cause irritation for people on rosacea-prone skin and can help treat those bumps, those papules and pustules. We also have washes like sulfur washes that can be helpful and for, for some more severe bumps, for more severe papules and pustules that aren't responding to topical treatments, that's where some of our systemic medications like oral antibiotics or like isotretinoin Accutane can help with these bumps. And then finally, moving on to thymus changes, these growths on the nose where the nose becomes thicker and full of the sebaceous tissue. Here often we need to use either pill treatments like oral antibiotics like doxycycline or minocycline or isotretinoin because it can be very difficult to treat these thymus changes with topical therapies. And for some where these thymus changes have really progressed and become disfiguring, we can use surgical treatments to help try to correct the appearance of the skin and to undo the damage from these thymus changes. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. For more acne and rosacea content, check out our channel. And if you found this useful, give our video a like and subscribe to our channel for more content.